Welcome to this video, Growing Your Fan Base, Lesson 7. Send social media to action links. Now that we have a sales process in place, you can start sending people to it. Note, not all of your posts on social media should be promotional. Some of it should actually just be content that is released for people to see it. You have to remember that social media is to hang out. So you have to weave in regular posts very often, way more than promotional posts as well. However, now you can start to send people to take actions. So here's some examples of calls to action or CTAs for social media. You can run a contest. This works incredibly well. I highly encourage using Gleam.io if you're going to be running a big contest, especially if you're trying to get you know, YouTube subscribers, Instagram followers, Facebook followers, you know, websites, emails, everything, like whatever. Like you want multiple things to happen. That's a really good place to start. Gleam.io works really well for contests. If you want them to pre-save new music, you can start with that and, and send them to an incentive and say, hey, go pre-save our new music, but go to this thing to check out our unreleased music or whatever. Like You have to have an incentive for them. To listen to new music or watch a new video, you can send them to a landing page as well. Get behind the scenes footage, whatever it is. Like You can see. The idea here is that you give them something for free and then you get them to join your mailing list so you have the opportunity to upsell at the end of that nurture sequence. So whatever it is that triggers that whole sequence to start and for them to go to a landing page, you need to promote that, right? So if you have new music, talk about that. And we'll talk more about launch sequences when you're actually launching new music later. But for every day, you know, wanting to get them on an email list, you can start giving them stuff, sending them to a contest, run a giveaway, whatever you want to do, and have them sign up to your email list. So here's just an example of a contest I ran. I actually partnered with Reverend Guitars to give away a sweet guitar. It was a $1,000 guitar. It was a Reverend Guitars Jetstream RB in transparent white. Very cool looking guitar. When we ran this, we ran it for 10 days. We ran $150 worth of ads and got 1,350 new email signups. We got 754 new Instagram followers. We got 520 new Facebook followers, 204 new YouTube subscribers, 372 new podcast followers. And like I said, we only spent $150 in ad spend over 10 days. The cost per lead acquired via email was 11 cents. So we typically say that anything under a dollar for acquiring a lead is great when you're doing something like a contest, especially a giveaway or contest. But if you can get it down to even less, like around 10 cents, 20 cents or something like that, then you know that you're actually going to be getting a lot of return for your ad spend. And that's what you really want. And like I said, it's, it's really hard to get people to sign up for anything for less than a dollar per lead. But if you're trying to sell something, it's way harder. If you're trying to give something away, it's a lot easier to do that. So this is kind of what Gleam.io looks like. You can have them enter, right? So the setup, the dashboard looks kind of like this, but you see like setup one, user details two, how to enter three. It's got all these type of entries that you can actually add. So I put subscribe to our rocking fan base. So that's what you want. Get their email address, right? Follow the Powered by Rock podcast on Spotify. Visit Powered by Rock on YouTube. Subscribe to the Powered by Rock podcast. All those things. And then you can see everything else that I didn't choose below that. So Gleam.io costs about $50 per month for the functions I chose. And the best part is you can pause it when you're not using it. So just run it for 50 bucks for one month and then pause it the next month when you're not using it. And you can have multiple actions for people to take. Like I'm showing there, there's like five, six things and including a refer friends for extra entries. That one worked really well. I think I had something like a thousand people, like emails. And then when I turned on, when I actually turned on the extra entries from referrals, that's when I got the extra like 350 at the end. So I turned it on towards the end, but you can actually do it right from the start. I also had a message to the contestant or to the applicant, whatever you want to call them, asking them if they remembered to follow on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube after they visited those pages. Because you can see it says visit on YouTube, visit on Instagram, visit on Facebook. So it's not actually saying go follow and you can't actually get a, a follow necessarily. However, there is a way that if you put like a follow-up question, so like when you actually open those up, it'll say, do you want to have them answer a question? And so then what I put was, did you remember to follow us on Facebook? Yes or no. Did you remember to follow us on Instagram? Yes or no. Did you remember to subscribe to us on YouTube? Yes or no. And so that actually increases the chance that they'll go and subscribe because then they think that they have to do that in order to actually get the entry to count. So what are some examples of things you can use as a giveaway or a contest? Well, here's some examples. A virtual hangout session. So, hey, 
It's a one-to-one virtual hangout session with you and a fan or, you know, one winner or maybe three winners can win. And you just hang out for like 30 minutes to an hour. You can autograph some old gear that's no longer valuable to you. Maybe it's a guitar strap. Maybe it's drumsticks. Maybe it's a broken pedal. I don't know. However, if you have to ship something, you probably want to make sure that the contestants and winners are only in your country to avoid huge fees and shipping issues. And ideally, you can run a contest locally and just have it dropped off or someone can pick it up or whatever. You can also state it in the contest and restrict other countries so you don't have to ship it out of the States or out of whatever country you're in. You can also give away autographed copies of your vinyl merch. You can have multiple winners, so giving away 15 signed copies of our vinyl, for example. You can do a meet and greet at a show. Just have to specify it is for people in certain locations, only where you're going, right? You can't have a meet and greet for somebody in Tennessee if you're never going to Tennessee. You can also give out free tickets to a show. You can also give out a bundle of your merch, so shirt, CD, stickers, whatever. Like if you got like five different things that you can bundle together, make it like an $80 or $100 value, you can do that, and a lot of people might sign up for that contest. So normally I don't recommend running ads to a purchase because you're trying to get somebody to buy something straight from social media. What you'd rather do is run them to like a contest or something free, right, so that way they can go to that landing page. However, the only time I would recommend running ads to a purchase is when you are actually launching a new album or launching new music or whatever it is that's actually going to create awareness about a big thing. You can also do it if you're trying to headline a show or something like that and you want to sell tickets. But basically, it has to be to a sale and it has to be part of a bigger launch process. It wouldn't be necessarily a thing that you would do all the time to try to keep growing, you know, whatever your your Facebook or your Instagram presence. You wouldn't be ro- rolling ads for that. You'd only be doing it in launch periods. You can use free posts to tell people about new merch and such, but spending money on ads for new merch is usually a waste of money because the return on ad spend is not high enough, right? So here's some call to action steps. Number one, have something of value to offer your fan base. Number two, post about how you are either running a contest or giving something away to everyone who signs up early. So you can actually give something away to everyone if it's like, for example, you want to get them lyric sheets or liner notes or whatever it is that you know, it might be cool for like a new album, for example, or two free tracks that aren't going to be on the album. Everyone who gets that thing early will also get those extra things. It's like an early bird incentive. Number three, you can send them to a landing page. This will likely be different than your previous landing page for your nurture sequence, just because you want to tag them as the contest, right? So it can be the exact, you can duplicate the exact same thing, but you want to tag them separately. So you might even put them through the same landing page but it or look like the same landing page, but you might have a different tag. And that's why when I previously talked about tagging, that you would probably just recreate something to tag them for a separate purpose. That would be a good idea. It can look exactly the same. You just change the tag. So when you do that rule, it'll say once they enter their information on this form, they get a tag as, you know, giveaway contest or whatever it is. So, you know, go back to that step if you need a reminder on how to set a rule for when somebody does an action, they get tagged with something. So that's number four, tag those people based on the contest giveaway name. Number five, allow the nurture sequence to make the sale of whatever it is you are offering. So this is the best part. You can just duplicate your previous landing page and then change the tag to the contest name. And then you can run the exact same nurture sequence. It's just going to have a different tag. So you know when they're entered in, it didn't come from something else like whatever, a new subscriber from just the website or something. And number six, if any fans email you and start up a conversation, then they are a very warm lead and you can let them know about offers as a sneak peek or FYI. Don't hard sell them. So like if you were saying, hey, by the way, if you're really interested in kind of talking more, I'd love to have you join our Patreon page and we can join the Discord or whatever. You know, talk more, talk more about everything there. That's a great way to kind of just sneak in that, that offer. So let's take some action. Go ahead and create a free or giveaway offer. Create a landing page for that offer to capture emails and tag people who join. You can just just basically duplicate the exact same thing that you already created. Or if you just want to use only giveaways that you're wanting to do, you can just use the previous one that you set up and tag them as giveaways or whatever. Allow the nurture sequence to make the sale. You don't have to go in there and try to, you know, rush it and try to jump in on email three after somebody, you know, writes back or, you know, just because you don't know if they're getting the emails and try to make a sale. Just let the nurture sequence do its thing. Use any direct fan contact as an opportunity to give a sneak peek at your nurture sequence offer, but don't hard sell it. So again, talk about it. 
you can offer it and say, hey, we can continue this conversation over here if you're really, really interested. But don't make it awkward because then you just look like somebody who's trying to promote something without actually caring about them. So that's one of those things that you will have to know. It's more of a it's more of an art than a science. It's not like, hey, after a certain amount of times of talking to them, when should you do it? It's just going to be kind of, if it feels right, go ahead and tell them like, hey, I'd love to have you join over here. It's only $5 a month. You can click this link and join. 